Hi, I'm Kenyon Wilker, and today I'm excited to share updates to four areas in ArcGIS Online. ArcGIS Online is Esri's SaaS solution for organizations that need to create, share, and explore maps, data, and apps to help solve geospatial problems. Many of us begin our data discovery and exploration in web maps. And I'm excited to share that the next generation map viewer is now in general availability and can be set as your default viewer. Let's use it to explore some enhancements to web mapping. Blending is one of the most exciting capabilities in the new map viewer and across ArcGIS. It takes the capabilities of top tier graphic design tools and makes them directly available as cartographic visualizations. Here, we have World Hillshade with demographics data on top of it. Normally, we use transparency to show these layers together, losing some of our color in the process. But now, we can use the multiply blend mode to easily fuse topography into our map while keeping the informative colors of our demographics data. We can also use blending to further engage our viewers by focusing our map. In this case, we have a population density raster that shows more precisely where people live. We can use the destination in blend mode to show only where our demographics data overlaps with our population density raster, deepening our understanding of these demographics. Performance enhancements in the map viewer enable us to easily symbolize and dynamically explore our data. Here, I've symbolized thousands of census tracts by the percentage of the population that are renting. Using the range slider, the map gives us feedback, enabling us to explore our data dynamically. Now, let's explore charting in the new map viewer. You can create a variety of charts, including histograms, bar charts, and scatter plots. I've created a scatter plot to continue to explore our renting data along with the millennial population in the US. Notice that the chart automatically picks up my map's colors. On the bottom right, we have several outline tracks. Selecting them on the chart also highlights them on the map. And zooming in on some, the map continuously updates my symbology, enabling me to continue to explore this data dynamically. Next, let's explore what's new with configurable applications. With the recent update to ArcGIS Online, you can now create applications directly from the new map viewer. Let's create an instant app. And we'll use the minimalist template. Instant apps are a type of configurable application that enable you to go from map to app in a consistent and quick manner. In the Applications Express setup, we'll start by verifying the map and title selecting our widgets, previewing the application on a variety of screen sizes, before publishing the application. You can see that we've quickly created an application with an intuitive and engaging user experience, where we can continue to explore demographics across the US. Next, let's look at what's new in Dashboards, a configurable application that enables you to monitor and explore your data. Here, we have a dashboard showing outages across the US national power grid with PENS data from our partner Gridmetrics. The Gridmetrics PENS data is monitoring the health of the US national grid by watching the telecommunications network to see when and where it loses power, like here outside of Houston, Texas. And since dashboards are built off the JavaScript 4.x API, we can interact with advanced functionality authored in the new map viewer, including dynamically filtering clusters like these power grid outages, along with their dynamic labels. Next, let's look at another recent enhancement in dashboards, support for Arcade. Within a dashboard, we can use Arcade to extend functionality, enabling us to automate additional feature-driven visualizations and calculate attributes on the fly. Selecting an outage in Wayne County, Michigan, 
I see the list informs me what time the outage started at, but I also want to understand what the current duration of the outage is. To do that, we'll go into our list and add an arcade expression that calculates the duration of the outage by subtracting its start time from the current time. The expression also highlights recent large outages. Another recent enhancement to dashboards is keyword search and multiple filter reset. Searching for Wayne County, Michigan, the arcade expression informs me of our recent outages and I can see our new duration attribute in the list, letting me understand the current time that the power has been out. Selecting one of the new outages, we can even view critical infrastructure like assisted living facilities in its immediate vicinity. And finally, one of the premier capabilities of ArcGIS Online is access to the Living Atlas with thousands of authoritative layers and applications. Some of the most recently updated or added features include updated base maps, like new localized languages and stylized base maps, updated multispectral imagery, including new Sentinel-2 releases for land cover classification, updated population demographics, including the most recent ACS statistics, and even ready-to-use deep learning packages, like this one, for Sentinel-2 land cover classification. Let's explore another new data collection in the Living Atlas, the National Geospatial Data Asset Portfolio, also known as A16 Layers. We've worked with the US federal government to make these available through a centralized set of resources. They're a collection of authoritative ready-for-use data sets that include high-resolution imagery, critical infrastructure, congressional districts, and more that are updated regularly and available for anyone to display, use, or download. Next, let's check out an exciting new enhancement to one of our most popular base maps, OpenStreetMap, which is often a great source of foundational information in many places around the world. And nowhere is this type of support more important than rural or isolated places, like this mining town in the outback of Western Australia, Kalgoorlie. Zooming in on the town center, we can see that only the main part of the town has been fully mapped on the classic OpenStreetMap. But now, Esri includes the daylight distribution as the default OpenStreetMap base map, enhancing the great work of the OSM community with the help of Microsoft's MS Building Footprint AI model for additional geographic validation and levels of detail. ArcGIS Online is constantly growing and evolving, adding new capabilities and information with every release. When we bring all these capabilities together, we can create insightful and engaging applications like this one that uses cartographic blending, data from the Living Atlas, and the JavaScript 4.x API to display US ship traffic over the past three years. This is just a piece of all the new capabilities in ArcGIS Online available to you now. And I encourage you to try out these features and more to explore your data and solve geospatial problems.